How you doing, YouTube? It's Ben Ferriolo once again. I do have something to bring to you today. I was rudely awoken at 2.51 a.m. Pacific Time last night, which would be July 12th, 2019, by a magnitude 4.6 earthquake just to my northeast. Yeah. Um, it was not too, too crazy. Shaking was not too intense, but it was definitely enough to wake me up out of my sleep. It woke my daughter up, woke my fiancé up, but my son, he slept right through it. He loves sleep. But yeah, pretty much everyone in the household woke up from it. Uh, the chandelier that we have is very heavy, so it really wasn't swinging much. You can see it was moving just a tiny bit, but nothing too crazy. So what happened was I thought someone was shaking me awake, right, in the bed. But there's this backboard against the uh, the closet in my bedroom, and you could hear it going quick, 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 because it was hitting the uh, the door to the closet, right? And I was like, okay, that's weird. What was, who was shaking the bed? And then I look up at my TV because I have this huge 66-inch TV uh, right at the end of the bedroom so I could watch while I'm on the bed. And it's hanging from the wall, right? And it can wobble if there's an earthquake. It's 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 my earthquake detector. <laughs> it's my earthquake detector from now on, guys. And I look at it, and it's wobbling back and forth, right? Wobbling, wobbling. And I'm feeling the bed shake back and forth. I'm like, oh, my God, guys, earthquake, earthquake, get up. And my son slept through the whole thing. Uh, my fiance Jordan, she was like, what? An earthquake? What? And my daughter came in and she was like, daddy, I think we just had an earthquake. <laughs> you know, cause she knows that I talk about earthquakes and volcanoes a lot. So they're, they're used to that stuff. I kind of tell them what an earthquake would feel like. And she's like, daddy, I think we had an earthquake. So cute. You know, she's like half asleep, you know, cause it woke her up. Um, we packed some bags to get ready to leave just in case if these were four shocks to a larger event. They still could be, but I don't think so because, you know, earthquakes like this do happen every now and then in western Washington. Uh, it has been a while, actually. This is the first earthquake I've actually felt here in Washington, actually in my life, since the 2001 Nisqually magnitude 6.8. Yeah, it's been almost 19 years since I have felt an earthquake, so it was definitely quite an experience. Why don't we go down here? First off, last night, let me try to turn on, if it'll let me. Sorry, guys, my computer's a little bit slow because there's so many earthquakes occurring. Let's do largest magnitude first, right here. Last night, there was almost a 5.0, guys. Almost a 5. Actually, wait, I think that was this morning, actually. I think that was this morning. Now, they said the swarming at coastal volcanic field is starting to die down. It is a little bit, but we are still seeing mid-range 4s almost up to magnitude 5. So, activity still continues. Still 1,820 earthquakes in the past 24 hours being reported. Yeah, it's still popping off down there, near coastal volcanic field and the Ridgecrest area. Again, I do not believe this is caused by volcanic activity anymore. However... I do believe that it could lead to some potentially in the future. I'm not saying like soon, but I do believe that it could lead to it if it if the tectonic activity was strong enough and the magma reacted in such a way. Ah, just in the past hour or so, we we're seeing a magnitude 1.5 and 4.3 kilometers in depth in Ording, Washington, just to the southeast of Ording, actually. But let's take a look at the earthquake that woke us up from our be beauty sleep last night. Okay. Here we have the magnitude 4.0, oh, come on buddy, the magnitude 4.6 at 24.3 kilometers in depth, look at the depth right there guys, that is kind of deep, a little bit, maybe, uh, I don't think it's deep enough to be considered part of the subduction process, because I think the subducting area in this location is what, 50 kilometers in depth or something like that, I, I'll have to go look that up online, but yeah, there, and aftershocks seem to kind of float towards the Puget Sound. I think that's very interesting. Right after the 4.6, there's a 3.5, which I did not feel, but I definitely felt this 4.6 woke us right up out of bed. Bed was shaking. TV was wobbling. Oh, yeah. It was a pretty cool experience, guys. It was pretty cool. Oh, yeah. I, I, I actually genuinely enjoyed it. I know. I Call me crazy, but I actually enjoyed it. Look at all the aftershocks. 1.7, 0.9, 1.6, 1.5, 1.2. 1.4, 1.0, 1.1, 1.6, and a 1.1, all around the same depth. A little bit deeper, but, you know, that's what we could see. I don't know what fault is in this area. Um, 
It says that it occurred at Three Lakes, Washington, but it's more of the Monroe area, which actually is not that far from me at all. Very interesting, guys. Very, very intriguing. By the way, I live right here. Yep, that's where it is. So let's go take a look at the event page of this earthquake. Here's the event page. Zero kilometers south-southwest of Three Lakes, Washington, which basically is in Monroe, Washington. 24.3 kilometers in depth. 12,248 people reported feeling this, and this was in the middle of the night. Can you imagine if this was during the day? A lot more people probably would have felt it. Um, yeah, because this is the middle of the, middle of the night. It probably didn't wake everybody up, but a lot of people felt this earthquake, guys. And by the way, one of these felt reports is mine. I did submit a felt report. Remember, if you ever feel an earthquake, always submit a felt report so that we can see it right here. It comes up on the responses. Look at the Did You Feel It map, guys. Check this out. Look at all these responses from all over Western Washington and the Seattle area. All the way up past Vancouver, people reported feeling this earthquake. And where I'm located is right in the mess, right here. See how dark blue green is a little bit stronger. Dark blue is slightly less strong and light blue is kind of weak. But look at that, guys. Yeah, I'm right. I'm actually right here. I think this this box is mine right here. Nope, that's Woodenville. Where is it? Maybe that is me right there. So yeah, the the did you feel reports, which I submitted one, there's a lot of them. And here's a little bit more of an in-depth look of the felt distribution of this earthquake which struck right here. A little bit stronger shaking farther to the east than towards the west. But we still see people felt it a long ways down here, guys. All the way down to like Tacoma, possibly even Olympia. Yeah, people in Olympia definitely reported feeling it too. Very intriguing, guys. All right, here are all magnitude 4 reported earthquakes since uh, magnitude 4 and above since January 1st, 1990. Down here we see the largest event is obviously the magnitude 6.8 Nisqually earthquake, which occurred at 51.8 kilometers in depth. On the infamous day that I will never, ever forget, where everything started shaking like crazy, my dad, <laughs> my dad told my mom to get out of the shower. My mom, my mom said, I'll always remember what she said. She said, I'd rather go out, I'd rather die in here than go outside naked. <laughs> oh God, it was so funny. But I went outside, put my ear to the ground, and you could hear the rumbling coming from the ground. It was a moment I'll never forget. Uh... Last night's magnitude 4.6, even though I felt it, doesn't even compare to the Nisqually earthquake. We see the largest ever in this region right here is a 5.4 in 1996 at 3.8 kilometers in depth. Pretty strong. So earthquakes this size do not occur that often at all, but they do occur every now and then. We see a 5.0 down here in 1995. 1994, there was a 4.3, very shallow along the Cascade Range. Then here, we do see some larger earthquakes every now and then in this area. 2009, 1997, 2017, there was a 4.1, 1994, and 2003. So it definitely is a significant earthquake for the Seattle area ever since the 2001 Nisqually earthquake. You can say the 5.4 was the last one, but it wasn't because that was in 1996. The Nisqually quake was in 2001. It was almost a 7.0. So it definitely is a significant earthquake, guys. We definitely had a good-sized one or more on the way. I don't know. Could these be four shocks? Maybe. I don't know. Just be prepared, just in case. We have a go bag ready right now that I made last night, just in case. Because, you know, I know how earthquakes can react. I was thinking this was possibly a four shock. Doesn't look like that right now, but I wanted to be prepared, just in case. Remember, it's better to be prepared than scared. Here we have the closest seismic station, BHW, in the UW network to the earthquake I felt last night, which was reported as a magnitude 4.6 earthquake around 24 kilometers in depth near Monroe, Washington. Now you can see automatic uh, amplitudes are cut, and we see a down, down going P wave, but the amplitudes are cut on here by at about 2,000 amplitude count. Notice I did not do that on purpose. It is just how the instrument is. I don't know why. Let's just do 2,500. 2500 yeah so they need a new instrument here that is for sure but the second coast of seismic station will use this to look at the 4.6 which is evgw in the uw network uh enz which is actually an accelerometer you can see here it is right here strong p wave 
S-Wave right here is where I felt it. I started feeling the S-Wave because it was more of the horizontal motion that I was feeling than the vertical motion. P-Waves usually contain more vertical motion. S-Waves contain more horizontal. Here's the 3.5 right here. Let's go through here. Here's the magnitude 3.5, which I did not feel, actually. I did not feel the aftershock of a 3.5. See another aftershock right there. Another aftershock. Another aftershock. Another aftershock, another aftershock, and we got another one right there. Little teeny, teeny, tiny aftershocks, but nothing too, too crazy. The uh, the P wave arrivals on some of these aftershocks and even the main shock are just kind of weird. I don't know. The P waves are just, I've never seen any anyone like this. Look at that. Look at how strong the P wave is. Very, very strange. Definitely interesting earthquake activity that we haven't seen in Washington State for quite some time, at least in Western Washington. So that's pretty much it for that. And also here are the seismograph stations at Yellowstone. You can see the magnitude 4.6, which shook my place, was detected right here. That is right when it showed up on the, whoops. That's right when it showed up on the seismograph stations at Yellowstone. Yes, the 4.6 in Washington State, right near my house, was strong enough to be detected on seismic stations at Yellowstone. Yeah, it was that strong, guys. On July 15th through the 19th, stations may flatline or go offline. That is likely maintenance on their server and data may still be available through the Iris Data Select URL Builder. So these do go down. By the way, we did see data go down just for a little bit. Doesn't really matter though. Want to know why? We still got YDD showing that data stream right in the middle that was offline. Boral 944 showing it. Boral 208, YFT, YNR, YNM, Borehole 950, YUF. So we still got a good amount of stations that did not see the data go down right here. The data is probably still available online. However, just letting you know that seismic waves propagate away from their source like a ripple in a pond. Here we are on my Steamboat Geyser Norris Basin Yellowstone 2019 page. Now about a day and a half ago, Steamboat Geyser did erupt. It was... Now, the most recent eruption, shown here, is the 27th eruption of 2019, which is the 59th eruption since it reactivated in early 2018. June 2019 broke a record of its own, and Steamboat erupted seven times in June, setting an all-time record for eruptions in one calendar month. This most recent eruption was a very small one, but an eruption nonetheless. Steamboat still seems to be alive and well. We only need six more eruptions to beat the all-time yearly record of 32 eruptions in one calendar year, which was achieved by Steamboat Geyser 2018. If Steamboat keeps erupting regularly, we should beat the 2018 record in the next one to two months. Stay tuned. Yep, Steamboat erupted again. 27th eruption of 2019 occurred at 109 UTC July 11, 2019, which would be 709 PM Mountain Time, July 10th, 2019. Very intriguing, guys. We only need six more eruptions. That's it. That's it to beat the all-time record. We need six more eruptions. Woohoo! I think we're almost there. We're getting close. Possibly another month and a half if it keeps erupting regularly. Hope you guys have a great day. That's pretty much it for now. It's been fun talking about the earthquake that I felt last night. Definitely one for the memory banks in my brain. It was very fun to experience. Very cool. Call me crazy, but I'm an earthquake and volcano fanatic. <laughs> Hope you guys have a great day. God bless, and I'll see you later.